si, si Dios dice cosas, si Dios dice barbaridades, tú también tienes derecho. Hey, good morning, everybody. We are here from the San Felipe Reserve uh, outside of Cali in Colombia for the Swarovski live optic birding. Uh, uh, everybody's very happy to be here. Uh, this is a special event, uh, part of the Columbia Bird Fair, the ninth version of the Columbia Bird Fair. We are at, um, we're in a really neat spot called the the, the, the Piscina de las Tangras or the, or, the, or the Pool of the Tanagers. Uh, it's a lovely day. We just finished a one hour transmission in, in Spanish. Uh, got some nice tanagers, got some nice other surprises. Uh, have a great team here. So uh, wonderful. Let me introduce you to a couple of people. Here with our local guide, Jose Gregorio. Hello, how are you? Muy bien, we're in the y, y, y también con, con los, uh, con los propietarios y los anfitriones. Don Carlos. Y Doña Clara. Good morning. We, we, it would be a pleasure to have you in San Felipe. We are waiting for you in Cali, Colombia. Muy bien. Muy bien. We are enjoying a very beautiful day and we hope that the transmission is going to be a really a success, successful experience. All right. Have a nice day, every one of you. All right. All right. So we'll see what we'll see what turns up at the at the uh, at the at the espejo or at the pool. Carlos Mario is manning the the, the telescope, uh, so as stuff comes on screen, we will uh, make you aware of it. We've also got some other colleagues, not only in Colombia but also in Mexico. So this is a, uh, as you may know, I, uh, this is a this is a, a bilateral event. Uh, Mexico is the is the uh, specially invited country. It's the país invitado of the ninth version of the Colombia Bird Fair. Uh, so, Roger, are you back with us? Hello, hello. All right. Anyway, we're back at the uh, back from San Felipe in the hide here uh, in the new installations. Uh, it's a great spot to come. Uh, and check out the, the tanagers and oh, Roger's got the potu back. Roger, talk to us. Oh, we're still waiting for Roger. All right, so anyway, um, Columbia Bird Fair, ninth, ninth year. Uh, five, over, over 500 people last night coming to the opening, which was, uh, which was incredible. It's great to be back together in, in uh, uh, in real time and live and direct after a couple of years of, uh, of remote Columbia bird fairs. Uh, there's an incredible amount of happiness uh, among the, among the participants. And, uh, and, and uh, yeah, we, we, we do, we need some birds. Um, so as we, as we get some birds on the camera for you, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just tell you, um, 
we've got groups in Mexico, we've got groups in Colombia, and we are, uh, we'll be with you for about the next 40 minutes, hopefully to show you some tanagers uh, and some of the other specialties from uh, uh, kilometer 18, as it's called. Thanks everybody for, for, for being with us. Thanks everybody for bearing with us as we work through some, uh, some technological limitations. Uh, Eduardo, can you, can you hear us okay? You want to tell us where you are? Hola, buenos dias. Hey, how are you? Fine, thanks. And you, we are here in Holbosch in the natural protected flora of Juana Yumbalam. We're watching wow. a, a great, great blue heron, white variety or white morph. All right, all right. And tell us a little bit about Holbosch, if, for those who aren't uh, familiar with it. Holbosch, is a, it's an island that is in the Quintana Roo state of Mexico. And here, we are, and it's inside of the territory of a natural reserve. That is, the, the name is Jumbalam. Here, here's where we are making the transmission. We had some problems with the, with the Wi-Fi at the beginning, but now we are okay now. All right. Well, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, Mexico is the is the is the uh, país invitado or the special invited country to the Columbia Bird Fair this year. So we're transmitting uh, live from Mexico and from 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 Colombia in the Western Andes. Looks like we're back. Uh, our neighbors in Kilometro 18 have uh, looks like they've dialed up Po two for us. Roger, are you with us? Or Andrea? All right. If well, if the audio is not coming through, uh, for anyone who's had the experience of seeing this, it's often confused with a uh, with a stick or a branch or a tree. I uh, remember. Uh, the first few times that I saw them, uh, uh, I was quite surprised to find out that what I was looking at was a was was actually a bird. Um, the juveniles of these also look look uh, are quite interesting and and often in in some rural areas uh, uh, cause people to be to be to be to be to be frightened. So you know the environmental education and and sharing about uh, the importance of these birds is 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 always important. Um, so we, we, we should be, we, uh, all right, we've got a, we had a, what did we have there, Master? Was that a, was that a, uh, a crimson rump? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I used to, when I was, when I was just starting, I also used to get crimson rump and, and uh, emeralds confused. And then I learned that the, that the trick is that the, uh, that the emerald has yellow on the bill. Is that right, guys? All right. Joel, mate. Good morning. Hey. Hello, Ricky. How are you? How's it going? All good, man. All good. Looks like I the mean, sun has come up a little bit there for you. The sun is shiny. Uh, the hummingbirds are happy on the feeders. Let me actually, sun is shiny. Let me show you shining sunbeam. Look at this. We are in wow, the right. All Shit, right. It's gone. Right. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. I'm just, you know, setting up here. The hummingbird feeders are super active. That's a sparkling volunteer. We are in Hacienda del Bosque in the central Andes. A couple of mask flower pierces with a black face and red eyes. More hammers here. That's buff wing star from it. Look at that. Look at the patches on the wings. Long straight right. bill. So yeah, the sun, the sun is out. Let me try to show you another hammer here, shining sunbeam. Try to see, Very try good. to see the, yeah, try to see the, the rainbow in the back. That's so Look cool. at that iridescence, that's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, not too shabby, not too shabby as we say on the birthday show, man. <laughs> not too shabby. <laughs> uh, great to have you with us, Diego. Thanks for joining us. Man, man it's, it's great because it's pretty last minute, you know, impromptu appearance because, you know, let me show you here. This is, you know, this is the feeder where they, get a little later lunita lunita is the crescent face and theta so fingers crossed she's gonna show up here with a client actually you know making a little look at this broken toe and i'm making a little bit of a of an appearance here for this tour so <laughs> oh man let me try, let me try to show you some more hummers tourmaline sun angel is just here yeah, our friend little George little. was just was uh, our friend George Armistead. I think he just got his lifer crescent face there uh, two days ago or three days ago. 
was great for him because yesterday we spent the whole morning waiting for it and never showed up. So we are crossing our fingers today, man. There's a tourmaline sun angel showing us the back. Not much to see, actually. Beautiful flower piercer. Yay! Black Cup Tanager, Carlos. Finally, we didn't get one in the first session, which we which was a bit of a surprise. Look at this. That's Again, good. shining sunbeam, sunning. So Diego, what's the perp why why is why does it ha why is it um what's kind of the ecological purpose of that of that of that bright uh, iridescent back patch? What does that what does that mean for or what can you tell us about that? Oh man, no, no real idea to be honest. Thanks for the for the challenging question. But uh, you know, all hammers have these structural colors, and they are you know part of their of their status quo, let's say. And actually, one of the weird ones in nature is this shiny sunbeam that is not green and shiny. So I guess it's a it's a relictual, you know, little bit of the the structural coloration uh, that is left on the back. Probably it has a sexual meaning. It has you know it's a characteristic that makes them you know to to express a little better how fit they are to be you know i want to be the parent of your kids of your little hummingbirds uh it, it should be related to sexual selection but uh, you know i'm not completely sure if that specific patch on the specific part of the body has you know any specific function wow look at the blue wing mountain all oh, right one of the classics of the of the look at this if 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 you're watching right now there is a slaty blood finch walking here on the ground oh, i think they'll they'll doesn't have me on camera but yeah yeah so you're, you're back you're back it's just yeah it's just here i like willing willing to get some food so i'm back to the well black uh black wing saltator that's good yep we got the saltator back and the sunbeam all right well a couple birds on the screen that's good okay all right so we got the hummer in the middle screen there and there we go. okay great well for those of you who are just joining us we are uh from a couple localities here in colombia we're in the western andes here in in um in the san felipe Reserve and Diego Calderon is with us uh, in the Central Andes from El Bosque. And Kashmir is with us from the state of Veracruz in Mexico. Hey, good morning. I just got uh, the Cap <coughs> Motmot, one of the endemics for Mexico. Right hey, now, I'm one of the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh. Yeah, I'm here in one of the central parks of the of Jalapa here in the state of Veracruz by the Gulf of Mexico. We are in a chimney, volcano's chimney, and right now I'm watching one of the really cool birds, one of the motmots, the blue cap motmot. These guys are like really common in this um, in this area. Oh, there it goes. All right. They're feeding on the ground and then coming back to a different branch, you just move. <laughs> nice. So a question for Diego. Diego, when people go to El Bosque, what are they looking for? What are some of the what are some of the targets there? Well, actually the main target here in El Bosque is the crescent faced antita. That is the, the Lunita, you know, one of the one of the one of the one of the cool birds here, but this place is full of other birds that they feed, equatorial anteater, gray browed brosfinches. You can just let me, I'm gonna show you right now. This is, you know, mountain toucans. That's the card from here. It has an anteater oh, and great. mountain toucan. Gray breasted mountain toucans come here, super cool. So it's a little bit like a pilgrimage birding. You come to the first feeder and see the equatorial anteaters early in the morning, then later come to Lunita, that is the crescent face. And then later you go to the to the mountain toucans. It's pretty neat. I mean, and and you know, it's a way that non-birders can actually get close to birds and get to see them. And you know, I, I am particularly not the you know huge fan of having birds in your hands, for example. And you know, I, I recognize the effect this has on, on regular people. So it's 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 great. It's, it's a great place. Is you know, everyone is coming here. Oh, look at Bombot. Look at that. In Mexico. All right. 
All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the light yeah. isn't good. <laughs> All right. Well, we're with you from the Western Andes, from the Central Andes, uh, and from the state of Veracruz in Mexico. Well, we've certainly lucked out with the weather today. We got a we got a gorgeous day. Um, had a lot of activity earlier. It's calmed down a little bit, but uh, bear with us. We've got we've got folks out looking. Um, so we're in a really neat spot uh, at this at this private reserve. Um, for about a year and a half, they've been working to to uh, kind of refurbish some of the facilities. They've also put in a great uh, a great very innovative project to accommodate. Um, uh, people with disabilities and handicap uh, or, or, or problems with sight or, or hearing. So it's a, it's a, it's a really wonderful spot. Um, quite innovative in, in, in its approach. And, and I'm from one, I'm, I'm sitting here in one of the, uh, in a hide that's right on a, uh, a reflecting pool that we're calling the, uh, the Piscina de las Tangaras. La what do you got there, Diego? That's a, that's a cool name, man. Yeah, yeah we of, just invented it. Yeah, yeah, you got a... <laughs> that's great. But you got a lot of places like San Felipe and all the places around the kilometer 18 in Cali because they're yeah. really, really yeah. making birding, you know, more more available and, and more open to everyone, you know, not only birders, as you mentioned, people with disabilities. And I love the, you know, that, that, that new approach. I love it. It's a, it's a tyranning wood creeper calling in the background right now. Uh, these feeders are a little empty. We got, you know. Hey, everybody. The, one of the hey, dogs. Everybody. The hey, everybody. Hey, there you are. Hey. Yeah, you get my put too. I, I have no, no audio up there. Okay, we can hear you well now. Cool, we are, we cool, are cool. I, we are used to it, Roger, showing birds without audio. We're used to it whenever it's <laughs> Oh man, I just had a, a plane room tanager briefly. She just flew away, but it's surely coming back soon. Why? Why do you know it was a she? Tell us more about sexual dimorphism on plane rooms. No, I had the one I had was a, a male, all black with a with a bright red rum, briefly. Yeah. And uh, the female, yeah, as you said, uh, they are very distinctive in between the the males and females. Females will look more more less black in general. It will have like black back and a yellowish, yellowish orange kind of a breast and uh, bent. I hope to show you one of them soon. So Roger, you've been on the on the road for three weeks, traveling across Colombia with with um, with Hillstar. Yeah, what have been some That's of the right. highlights of what have, what have been some of the highlights of the last uh, of the last couple of weeks? Oh man, man, like. A lot, because we were in a very, very nice place in, in Colombia, in northern Colombia, in the Sierra Nevada, Santa Marta. We did, yeah, as you said, three weeks of that with George and Hillstar Nature. And uh, and uh, that was pretty amazing, you know, like uh, Sierra Nevada, Santa Marta is like a little island, like an isolated mountain in the top of the of the northern Colombia. So there's a bunch of endemics that you can see there. And uh, in between those, of course, like the one of the biggest, the biggest ones are the, the Santa Marta Screech Howl and the Santa Marta Parakeets. And uh, we were lucky enough to score those during the, during the past weeks. Uh, that's great. And then you went to the, to the, uh, to the Eje Cafetero or the coffee country and, uh, and, and have been with the Lifeless podcast group, I understand as well. How's that Ex been? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like a, as, a, um, as a part of the, of the like they say, like a, like a pre birth fair, uh, activity we went to uh central andes and uh, check this out man i have a golden tanager and a golden nape tanager too let me see yeah there you go and then carlos mario has something dialed in as well looks like the the golden nape <laughs> Master, are you with us? Oh, lost it. 
No, it's good. Anyways, yeah, like we were in the in the, in the central land, is like in the in the coffee triangle of Colombia, checking checking nice, very nice lodges are around the central Andes. Um, and uh, yeah, it was was nice experience. Most of that uh, group is now like uh, enjoying the field trips of the bear fair, and um, and um, yeah, it's been it's been nice. We have a mod mod there from Mexico. Yeah, the mod mod is back. Yeah, now you can see the the racket tail very much. All right. Well, for those of you, for those who are just joining us, we, we're uh, we're in the Western Andes here in Colombia, uh, at an iconic spot called called Kilometro de Siocho or, or or Kilometer Eighteen, um, and are having a great having a great time. It's been a little slow the last few minutes, but. Uh, We'll see, we'll see what shows up. Is that a clay colored uh, tanager, Carlos? Master, what are we looking at? It's not in mute. It's not in mute. Yeah. Well, something cool about the mod mods is that they have like a little saw saw bill, so they they're really nice with like with earthworms or any other caterpillars. So they're always active. Like um, they're foraging, of course. Like this guy is he probably already fed a lot <laughs> this morning. All right, Diego's got the sunbeam dialed in again. Oh, that's a yeah. great view. Look at that, that's scratching nice a bit. Nice coming, man. You gotta come to the Andes here, and you know now. Now that I am, you know, on the screen, let me actually, guys, show you and everyone what's this about ant pita feeding? Because John, you know, you probably have mentioned it. Let me, you know, walk in right now. My client is there with the driver, Johan, and with the owner of the place and with the ant pita whisper. So these guys are basically on a nice hide here, and if you cross a window. You will see that the Ampita Witch, the master is there. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's the place where, you know, if it shows up later, I'll try to show it to you. Ale, llamala ahí un momentico para que quede aquí. Luni. Venga, Lunita. Luni. Suba, 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 suba. So basically, all these, get, all these birds get habituated to human presence and to be fed every morning. And you know that's that's a real amazing chance that nowadays people have to see these very very shy birds like anpitas. So here is Crescent Face and Equatorial. So all the places have uh, anpita feeding stations, and that makes possible to see them to conserve these places because you know this place has this place has boosted this activity because of these birds basically. So you know all in all is a pretty enchanting uh, new practice. You know, some people don't like it much, some people love it. But again, as you know, everything, when you put your hands in nature, everything, hummingbird feeders, feeding corn, putting seeds, whatever, you know, this is this is just another level, but it's almost... Diego, almost I understand. Diego, I understand this is something that, that started in, in Mindo, Ecuador. Uh, and, and I believe, is it Angel Paz, who was one of the pioneers of, of, yeah. of the practice? Yeah, and it's funny, it's funny, John Mayton, Great that you mentioned it because everyone knows Angel Paz in Ecuador. He started feeding the anpitas and he became super famous. This is this is uh, uh, velvet mountain velvet breast with the, the cures bill. Oh, it's gone. Uh, but the thing is that the amazing thing is that not only Angel was doing it at the very same time. Lucia in the Western Andes of Colombia, she was feeding anpitas, and it was almost by you know pure convergence, let's say, the same than, you know, Darwin and Wallace. And Angel Paz, of course, is Darwin, you know, very well known, famous, but Lucia is a little shyer Wallace that also was feeding and pita. So actually one of our mutual friends, John, uh, Julian Manrique, one of the videographers of the Birder Show and the Birder sure. documentary that you know well, he's doing a documentary on the ant pita whisperers. He's going to show us the story of Lucia and the guys that feed some pitas here on the on the Colombian Andes. So it's gonna be it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great because these guys have an amazing, crazy relationship with the birds that they feed. They are they are they are close friends. You you 
you gotta you gotta highlight that. You know, they're not only yeah. I saw, bird. We saw we saw yeah, Jose go Gregorio go. We saw Jose Gregorio go to work on the scale that uh, the day there before yesterday. But fantastic experience. It's it's a very you know close and personal thing. Look at that, look at that. The sword of hummingbird. Sword of hummingbird. It's gone. All right, we just had the sword. Ah, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was good to see the sword built hummingbird. Yeah. Quick appearance. There's a sparkling violet ear with his violet ears and violet belly. And these guys are calling Lunita. You know, there's a crescent face. If Lunita shows up, I'm going to run to the feeder, set up the scope, and hopefully try to show it to you guys. So how's the, how's the Columbia birther going on, John, mate? Uh, it's great, man. You know, for me, it's like Christmas uh, or Absolutely. New Year's, you know? My, it's, 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 it's such a great thing. And Diego, it's great to be back in, uh, you know, having a, a, a proper bird fair. It's been two years of, of uh, virtual, virtual reality, right? So yeah. just the, you can imagine how happy people are. And, and um, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of positive energy, a lot of excited, exciting. The program last night was great. The, uh, had fantastic music. We got to see the, we got, we got to see the new strategy, uh, the Anka strategy that yeah, you know, that's great. they've been working on from Autobahn and, 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 uh, the Instituto von Humboldt and Renoa. And, uh, it was really great to see, you know, after, after two years of, of a lot of consultations and a lot of, uh, a lot of hard work that the strategy comes to life and, and is, uh, unveiled at the bird fair. So that was, that was great. That was exciting. As great. Well. That was great. I love. I love that the Cali Birdford and all these all these events in Colombia they mix science with conservation, with pure birding, with you know uh, merch on birds, everything, everything. Birds, birds please us all in in all the manners, you know, in all the ways. That's that's the great thing about birds. They are the perfect excuse for anything, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And we've got you know, there's, there's really been. Let me, a, let me interrupt you. There. That's 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 a white cider or a black flower piercer there. It's uh fuck. It looks like a white side is just not showing the white. Yeah, let's watch our French here, Diego. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, um, oh sorry, sorry. PG 13, 14, I'm one of those just, things. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um no, I was gonna say that there's two there's two great there's there's there, there's been a proliferation of bird fairs in Colombia in the last uh yeah. several years, but but two of the big ones are the Congreso and the, and it, which is in Manizales where you are. Uh, and, and then of course the, the, the bird fair here in, in Columbia. All right. Now we're back to, 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 uh, one of the stars of the show. Roger, talk to us. There you go, guys. It's, it's been a bit sunny day. So it's like the bird activity has been, been a bit slow. We too. like right now, we hope to get some cloudy cover soon, but, uh, for now, enjoy this amazing, beautiful blue wind mountain tanager. <laughs> and, um, uh, Shoot, yeah, they live again. It's been, it's been, you know, I don't know if you can see, but uh, it's very, very sunny lot right now. So it's been kind of slow. Well, that's one of my all-time favorites. Is the is the uh, blue wing mountain tanager. All right, we got a blue gray tanager. At the swimming pool of tanagers or the piscina de la sangre. For those of you who are just joining us, um, we're here in Colombia, in the Western Andes. Looks like hey, we got a sickle wing. Hey, like John, yeah. Sickle wing one. Sickle wing one, yeah. Live right. from the feeders. Check this out. Like, how cool is that blue face? Pretty cool. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, those are awesome. walking around on the grounds here as well. Yeah, they call it, you know, they call it here La Matraquera um, to this one because they do very, very nice uh, vocalization. They do, they do like <laughs> something like that. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, look at that. View. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think, I think, I think you got its attention, Roger, with that. Yeah, it looks like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, this is another thing that's incredible about Colombia, right? I mean, the crassids are the most endangered family of birds. Uh, and here you can just see them walking around. We were looking at a, we were looking at uh, Wacharacas or Chachalacas from the from the hotel in 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 Cali, which is in the most um, ur urban sit you know setting you can imagine, and they're right out the you know they're right outside. So pretty incredible. 
It is. It is pretty amazing, you know, like uh, this one can be sometimes very secret secretive, like they like the understory of the forest to be, you know, like uh, the dense vegetation. But here you have if you are like close to us in the feeders. Another cool thing about La Florida, places like this, as you guys were mentioning before, are makes Berlin easier and more uh, like approachable to people. Yeah. Roger, did you guys get the um did you guys get cracks, Alberti, when you're on uh, up north? Oh boy, oh boy, Diego, take it away. We're going, sorry we're to interrupt you. All. Sorry to interrupt you. You are all watching Lunita. Lunita is a crescent-faced hand pita. One of the two. The, it's a couple that came to be fed in Hacienda al Bosque. So I'll, I'll show it to you in a little bit more. But this is this is the situation. The hand pitas are down there. Fantastic. The whisper is here. Photographers and happy clients there and look at this bird it's just wow. smashing oh i'll be does this, count as, a, does, this, does this count as a lifer for me Since okay I'll, I'll show you the second one guys can i count this as a lifer I'll, even I'll, I'll show you I'm not, I'm not actually hearing you my john mate because i have very low volume here it's not actually to disturb the bird, to not disturb the birds, but not disturb the viewers. Here you are. Oh, sure. Super cool. Actually, you know, I can't even, I can zoom on this. Anyways, guys, yeah, I'll show you. I'll Thank show you, you, Diego. Everyone is having fun and super happy. This guy keeps working there. Hey, man, good job. Ah, that was great. Hey, was good. good job, man. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> that's, the, that's the master. That's the master. Show us, Johan. Show us, show us one little picture. So look at that. This is this is what happens on these and Peter films. Oh man, these type of shots. That's Johan, our driver. You know from Solutions in Colombia, and he just made amazing photos of the and Peter. <laughs> man, I think I think it, that's gonna be a super hard to beat, you know, like Christian face and Peter in a live face. Christian face and Peter in your face, Roger, in your face. <laughs> you showing the managers, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I think I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying goodbye to the live. Hey, this Diego, thank new you. Baby. I'm just great, enjoying it. And yeah, John, great to see you, everyone. Cheers. Right. Hey, Amen. Very well, nice. Thank you so much. That was Diego totally. Calderon, one of the one of the one of the great birders uh, in the world, and and um, and certainly in Colombia. It was great to have Diego with us for a while. One of the Swarovski ambassadors as well. Uh, just showed us a crescent-faced ampita, so that was exciting. I'm gonna count. I've never seen it, so I'm gonna count that as my my virtual Swarovski live lifer. Uh, it looks like we just had. Looks like we just had the juvenile multicolor, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I think I think Carlos was in a multicolor tanager right right there. Yeah, so well, how about that, Roger? Diego shows up and he shows us the the crescent. Thing. Man, that's gonna be impossible to beat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the idea. And for for next idea. for next live session, very kind I of mean, him as well because he's with a, he's he's attending to a group. Yeah, he made kind of kind of made history, you know, like a. <laughs> I think that's got to be the first crescent faced and pitted during a, bir uh, a birth. I'm pretty night. sure. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> ah, that's great. <laughs> well, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, oh, we're in we're in Colombia. We're in the Western Andes. Uh, we were just in the Central Andes uh, in Manizales. Um, Columbia Bird, it's the, it's the ninth annual Columbia Bird Fair, doing a special uh, Swarovski live birding event uh, in both Mexico and in Colombia. Back there you to are. Golden, the Golden back, Tanager. Back to Golden Tanager. Which is never a bad bird it's to like, go back to. It's never a bad one, yeah. Super, super cool one. Ah, I have in the back here, let me try to get it pretty quick. Uh, Flame Brum Tanager in the back. There you go. Can you see it there? Oh yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice, colorful rump. So we were we were birding with a with a, with a person who is is birding for her first time, and that was her that was her lifer. That was her first uh, sighting. Not a bad one, right? Not bad.
<laughs> cool. Yeah, this is really pretty. And remember, we were talking about sexual sexual dimorphism. So this is the male. Yeah, I, remember the seeing, I remember seeing the, I remember seeing the female for the first time at a Columbia yeah. bird fair, and uh, and being quite confused. Yeah, yeah, female is was close. Uh, hopefully, it's gonna be back. And uh, I have it again here, very, very close. Ah, there we go. There you go. Oh man, I have a green honey creeper back there. Let me try to get it. Boom. Play it on. Green honey creeper. So, for folks that don't know, uh, kilometer 18 outside of Cali in the Western Andes is one of the most iconic birding spots in, in Colombia and in the world. And in the recent years has really been a proliferation of great birding sites, farms or 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 or, uh, or houses that have been converted uh, for, for for taking photos or for seeing birds or for walking around on trails. Uh, where we are right now, uh, the San Felipe. Reserve is a is a private nature reserve, part of Colombia's network of of um, reserves from civil society reserves. They're called, and uh, the infrastructure keeps getting better. The trails keep getting better, and uh, the accessibility is 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 uh, generally pretty good. When the you know as long as there are no landslides, and um, <laughs> it's really great to just see that 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 the the number of, of of places. I mean, off the top of your head, Roger, what are some of the spots in yeah. Colorado eighteen? Yeah, I mean, Alejandria, I mean, La Florida. Uh huh, exactly. La Florida, Alejandria, San Felipe, um, Bosque de Niebla, La Conchita. La Conchita. There are pretty, pretty nice places to enjoy birds, no? And uh, we are here with a nice gang enjoying the bird. I am here right behind me, be, be, beside me. It's Nate. I want. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Hey, John. <laughs> hey, Nate. What's going on? What's going on, man? It's been a good morning. Yeah. Hanging out here at the uh, at the feeders. Haven't really left them <laughs> for the most <laughs> part. Good. <laughs> Nate, tell us, tell for everybody that's uh, watching, tell us a little bit about uh, what you do and your impressions of Columbia. This is what your third trip, right? But first trip. Sure. So I, I work for the American Birding Association, and I host a, a podcast, the American Birding Podcast. Some folks might be familiar with that. Um, this is my this is my third time. Oh, Roger's got something. No, go ahead, go guy. Keep, keep keep talking. My third time to <laughs> Columbia. First time around Kali and. Um, uh, I first came down here in 2016, and it's just been incredible to see the growth of birding here in that time, and the the establishment of all these amazing lodges, uh, the the building the infrastructure for for not only you know a, a birding industry, an ecotourism industry, but all these wonderful places for Colombian birders. Oh, very nice, the barbet. Mm -hmm, the red-headed barbet, female guys. I, there's so many great Colombian birders um, at all in all walks of birding life, you know, the young birders and hobby birders and guides and academics, ornithologists. It's, it's, it's amazing. There's such a great community here. Uh, it's, it's really vibrant and, and it's fun to be a part of. When Nate, when people talk to you or ask you questions about Columbia in the U S mm -hmm. um, you know, I imagine they're, cu they're curious, but they may have some, some, some questions or they're, you know, for, 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 for such a long time, it was something, a place that people sort of dreamt about going to, but didn't really go. For sure. What's yeah, it no been doubt. like in the last few years? Like, how's the, how's the conversation changed a little bit? How, what do you hear? What do you hear in, in the States when, when people get back from a trip and talk to other people or. I, I mean, Columbia is very much the, you know, the hot neotropical destination right now. Um, it helps that there's so many great birds and so many great birders here finding birds. Um, there's just an energy around it that's really nice to be a part of and really nice to be um, to, to witness. Um, that's so good. <laughs> that's that's good. what a great bird. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I, I can't speak highly enough of, of Columbia when I go home and talk to people. It's, it's the one neotropical destination that I think would be fantastic for anyone who's interested in, in birding the tropics for people who have experienced other other parts of Latin America or people who are looking at visiting for the first time. Uh, it's it's just so friendly and so accommodating and uh, it's just a wonderful place. Well I'd love to hear you I'd love to hear you say that and it's great that you've been down uh, a few times now and, and that you're helping change the uh, change the narrative really about Colombia. No, I think for a long time when people heard Colombia they thought of Pablo Escobar or the war for sure. or the war on drugs for sure. or, or uh, or any number of other things, and 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 now look, we're we're looking at you know, yeah, it's, it's fantastic, and, exactly, and, uh, yeah. 
I gotta, I gotta get my camera out and get that bar, but when I go ahead, back, for sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks, thanks for joining us. Uh, <laughs> Nate, Twick, cool. Nate Twick, the host of the American Birding podcast, uh, a great show, actually. Uh, I consulted before the uh, before the, uh, the 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 pandemic really set set in. Uh, uh, I called Nate and I asked him how to do a podcast. And then once he told me how much work it was, I was like, you know what? I think I'm more of a podcast guest than a podcast host. <laughs> You're a great guest, John. Ah, uh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, a lot less preparation is is usually necessary. I think that's, that's true. Thing. Good. Hey, Eduardo, what do you got for us? We haven't heard from our cuates in Mexico for a while. That's a Wilson Plover. All right. We are in the. There is a bird conservation area that we have in Holbos, but the thing is that the all the plovers and pipers are going around and it's having a. They are giving us a little bit of complications to find them. But that's one of the birds that is nesting here in, on, on, on our island. So they're nesting on, the, the Wilson's plover nests on, on yes. um, Holbox Island, you're telling us? See, si. in, this, in this area where we are, we have always a nesting area for least terns, Wilson's plovers, American oyster catchers, and black neck stilts last year. So quite important, quite important for, for 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 shorebirds that are, as we all know, long distance migrants. Yes, that's all what right. I like the shorebirds. Master, talk to us. Like we're looking at a golden nape. Yep. A bit of black billed thrush. One of the common birds here. Uh, great. So the first hour we were in Spanish. The second hour we've been in English. Hope oh, we got the, the barber is back. Look barber is back. Barber is back, guy. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'm I'm pretty happy. You know, like as I was I was hearing you to talk with Nate and uh, to hear you guys talk about so highly about Colombia it makes me, you know, as a Colombian, pretty 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 happy. You know, and um. um we are also pretty honored to have you guys invited here. We have nice guests from many, many countries. And here behind, like next to me, I have Francisco, a very well-known ornithologist from Ecuador. And I want you to, to, to say hello for everybody. <laughs> Hola con todos. Aquí, Hola, Francisco. ¿Cómo están desde la Florida? Sabes que uno de los días más emocionantes de mi vida. Pajareando. <laughs> Ah, qué belleza. Sí, no, es uno, uno de los días más emocionantes aquí pajareando y, y con algunos lifers esperado en toda la vida. Este es un paraíso realmente con todas las aves que estamos viendo y su vegetación, la altura. Todo esto es nuevo para mí. Entonces, um, acabamos hace como una hora de ver el, el Chesnut Wood Quail. Impresionante este. Ah, oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, so what, the, este, uh, the, the, the perdiz or the chestnut wood quail, that's a, that's a gorgeous one. That's a gorgeous one. Sí, y ese estuvo bajando por un sendero y, y, y se lo vio como... Uh, 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 llegó, guys, lo, guys, 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 multicolor tanager here. Multicolor, multicolor tanager. All right. There you All go. Right. Kind All of... Right. Oh, shoot. Briefly one, but... Uh, <laughs> briefly. So we had a, that, Tell me you saw it, please. I saw it. I saw it. I saw okay, it. Everybody, cool. everybody, everybody <laughs> saw it. We just, we just had the multicolored tanager. We got um, Roger saving us with with redheaded barbet and multicolored tanager after Diego called the road, showed us a crescent faced ant pitta. Yeah, bar too high uh, now. Bar too high time ever. Uh, yeah. Back is back, guys. Session. John, 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 check this All out. All right, there it is. There it is. All right. <laughs> Thank you, multicolored tanager. There you go. Yeah, good things doesn't last long. <laughs> ah, that's great. Yeah, I remember. I remember the first time I saw that. I was at um, I was at a place called Chicoral, which is one of the which is one of the um, the, the uh, field trip sites for the for the Columbia Bird Fair. 
Oh, that was great. Well, we're getting toward the end, um, but it's been a it's been a great morning. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we'll see if anything comes out to surprise us here in the last in the last few minutes. But um, for anyone that's joining late, uh, we're at the Columbia Bird Fair doing a doing a Swarovski live optic birding event, being hosted by our friend Dale Forbes, who's been doing a great job. Um, it's been uh, exciting. Been ex been an exciting bird fair. We've got uh, next year will be in our tenth anniversary. We've got the Golden Tanager, one of the stars of the show, back here. Um, you never get sick of looking at these. Never. It's been our companion the whole show, both Spanish and English. And I have never. I mean, I can never be tired of seeing this guy. <laughs> what was the reaction was there? Cumbias. Here we are, we have some roasted spoonbills. Hey, multicolor, right. multicolor, 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 guys. Oh. Close. Oh. Ah, shoot. <laughs> Close. <laughs> euphonia. Oh, we got, a, we got a euphonia? Yeah, honestly, really euphonia. It's, kind of, it's also a new one for the show tonight, uh, today. Yeah, that's right. Very good. <coughs> Pretty nice. Nice combination right there. No, really yeah, pink to the nice. right hand side, yellow in the middle, <laughs> green in the left. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, for those who are tuning in here at the last minute, we're in the in the Gulf of Mexico in Mexico. Uh, in the and in the Western Andes in Colombia, there is a flock of, of roasted phone bills here. They, they call that the espátula. Espátula rosada. Yeah. But también le llamamos. They call it also chocolatera because they 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 mix the mud when they are feeding. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. The local names in Spanish are always the best. Say. <laughs> And also the white ibis, we call them cocopato here. Eduardo, let us know a little bit where you are. Where are you, where are you you're located right now? Let me have a, let me show you a little bit of where we are. Cool, yeah, please. <coughs> All right. Well, it's been a great morning. Thanks to everybody who's joined us from around the world. Thanks to Swarovski for, 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 for hosting the event. Um, thanks to all the places that have that have um, been participating, from El Bosque and Manizales that just showed us the crescent-faced ant pitta, uh, to the localities here at, Colum at Kilometer 18, uh, the San Felipe Reserve. Uh, Roger, tell us a little bit about specifically where you are and how people get there. Yeah, we are in the La Florida Reserve. It's uh, one of the of the best reserve here looking in the, in the kilometer 18. Kilometer 18 is in the, in the western side, in the western um, Andes of Colombia. It's a um, quite close uh, place uh, from from Cali, which is the kind of the like the biggest uh, cities out of the, in the western Andes and uh, has a, like a nice set of feeders that you have seen uh, this morning. They do have multicolored tanagerin feeders. They do have chestnut wood quail. Um, they are starting to feed little tinamu. So it's a lot of fun up here to to enjoy birding. Let me let me show you a little bit this other tanager that just arrived. Boom. Golden ape tanager showing well she his golden ape. <laughs> And right next to him, the golden tanager, our best buddy this morning. <laughs> so, so yes, George, um, John, like uh, this reserve is 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 very very nice for birding. It's like surrounded from like a very nice patch of forest, full of birds, great diversity around. And uh, it's a very nice cloud forest. 
uh, where you can, you know, like just walk the Kilimanjaro team, which is basically a road close to, to Cali. And uh, you can get like a very, you know, tons of birds, pretty fun around here. All right. We're here with the pride of Ibagué. Oh, yeah. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Roger. No, uh, thank you. Yeah, so we've got a question. You know what? Um, why do they call it green honey creeper since it's blue? Well, it's um, that has to do with, I believe, the female uh, is 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 uh, is green, right, Roger? That's right. Yeah, that's a, one of the few birds where that uh, that happens. The male is all blue. The green is all the female is all green, but the species is called green honey creeper. All right. Well, we've seen some great birds today. Um, thanks to everybody for participating. Uh, we're here from the from uh, we've been here all morning from the San Felipe Reserve, also kilometer eighteen, close to where Roger is. Um, been a lot of fun it is at a neat spot called the Piscina de las Tangaras, so everyone is invited here. Uh, it's it's a bit of a bed and breakfast. You can stay here. You can also come and just do a day trip. Uh, there are also facilities for um for people with disabilities uh with limited mobility with problems seeing or hearing uh really nice innovative project um so welcome everybody um roger any 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 parting thoughts no man thank you thank you so much for having us like um i'm here also with, with andrea i would like briefly to say hello to hello hey andrea tell you. us Hello, Andres, thank you, the uh, Colombia Bird Fair and Swarovski Optics. Uh, it's a beautiful place, the Florida. It's a nice opportunity to see many, many birds. And I'm very, very happy. Andrea, thank tell you. us quickly, tell us quickly for everybody um, watching, where is San Andres and Providencia and what's interesting about the bird life there? Okay, San Andres and Providence have uh, some um, endemic birds, uh, Bireo caribeos, and another uh, Caribbean species like uh, Leptotila amaisensis and uh, some icterus. Uh, we have a great migration time from September until November. We have uh, many warblers and chirpers and um, uh, well, many birds, and I want to invite everyone to visit uh, San Andres and Providence for right. uh, immigration time. Thank you very much. Very, very good. So San Andres and, and Providencia are, are islands in the Western Caribbean. They're actually a lot closer to Nicaragua and Jamaica than they are to mainland Colombia. Uh, but they've got, uh, they're, they're mostly kind of a mainstream tourism destination, but they've got great birds, great migratory species, and a couple of endemics, as, as Andrea was saying. Yes. Well, great. We're great. We're starting to wrap up here, folks. But listen, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, thanks to Swarovski. Thanks to our friend Dale Forbes, uh, who's a great ambassador for the birds uh, and, 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 is, and is doing a lot to showcase uh, the importance uh, and the beauty of uh, birding in Colombia. Uh, birding is, 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 is a great way to uh, appreciate uh, nature and to get to know uh, new cultures and new places, to drink coffee, uh, hear new kinds of music. It's a great excuse to take you around the world and, and learn. So it's like we got the great thrush stopping by to say goodbye as well. Yeah, yeah. And briefly before that one was the, and there again, the plain brown tanager female all right yeah yeah so yeah so thank you so much swarovski team john for having us uh for inviting us to 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 this live transmission we're gonna be surely having a lot tons of fun, of fun here in the in the bird fair getting to meet all, to meet old friends and uh, new ones so 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 yeah it's been, it's been a ton of fun and, and thank you so much for having us hey it's been our pleasure it's been our pleasure and uh, look forward to seeing you in a few hours at the at the bird fair, Roger. We've got uh, our keynote speaker tonight is Barbara McKinnon de Montes. She's also our honorary president, one of the most important conservation figures in in, in the history of Mexico, really. Uh, so we'll be getting to hear from her uh, tonight about her work with the Amigos de Cien Can in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, which, as we know, is one of the most important spots uh, for migratory birds. Uh, many of the birds uh, coming back from from and going to uh, 
uh, the tropics make a pit stop in, in the Yucatan Peninsula as they stage. Um, so looks like we've got the, uh, the female red-headed barbet there on our, uh, on our, on our right. The flame rump tanager. All right. Well, guys, we're getting pretty close to signing off. <clears throat> so thanks for joining us. Uh, it's been a wonderful morning. Thanks for, um, thanks for tuning in. If you have questions, let Dale know. He's always very, <clears throat> he's always very conscientious about updating the list uh, and, and sending it out. I'll be curious to, to know how many species we got. We had some technical issues earlier, so we didn't get quite as many localities as we were hoping. Uh, but I still think we saw a, a, a decent amount of birds uh, and certainly some beautiful birds. Uh, we've got a crescent-faced ant pitta. Uh, we got a multicolored tanager. We got a bunch of the other uh, uh, golden tanager, summer tanager uh a bunch of the stars of the show here so thanks everyone for being with us and um dale will let us know when when we do this again but these are these are these are fun events and uh it's always neat to be able to show the birds of of, of colombia uh el país de las aves the country of birds almost two thousand species for people that are thinking about doing a trip to colombia there are a, a number of uh, great outfits, international operators, local operators uh, that are offering trips. And, um, you know, I think the future is bright for the world of birding in Colombia. So, so people should come on down. And, um, you know, the first trip will probably inspire and motivate uh, several future trips because there's, there's, there's so much to see. So uh, you can start in the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. Uh, you can start in the Andes. Um, and uh, anyway, we're going to wrap up. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks, Swarovski. Uh, thanks to everyone who hosted us at their at their um, their birding reserves here on kilometer 18 and throughout Colombia and Mexico. And we'll sign off.